Good morning everybody and a very warm welcome to Milden Hall and today we have some trains running but that's not going to be the main focus of the video but one of the, the trains that's running will be the main focus in the meantime as you can probably see trundling around we have my class 66 just coming through there and this is my GBRF Evening Star and somebody in particular will well notice what I'm pulling behind there um, thanks to Alan at Dragon Junction, this is his rake of full moon coaches trundling around the layout um, with my Evening Star, class 66, with Coastal DCC Sound and I will talk to you about that in a moment but the main focus of the video will be the HST which is just running around about there um, because that HST is a Lima HST and that has got no didn't have no um, wasn't DCC ready or anything like that so I've had to hardwire um, a DCC socket to it and that is what today's video is going to be all about um, so but as you can see it's currently running at the moment and that's because it's running with one power car um, with the socket on the back, which is what this one is on the front here, 172, uh, sorry, 072, which is the one at the top end, and that's the dummy. The power car is the one that's training at the back. And um, basically, I'm going to see if we're going to fit um, two power cars to this Lima HST um, with a view at some point that if it runs correctly and it runs well enough, that possibly to fit a TTS decoder into it. Um, so at the moment, it's just running with one power car and one dummy car. So we're going to be fitting a chip to, um, not to the dummy car, because the whole point is, I picked up this off of eBay. And this is another dummy car, oh, sorry, this is a power car, sorry. And what I'm going to be doing is, because the um, I prefer the body shell on the other one, I'm going to swap the body shells over and I'm going to hardwire uh, a socket to this and that's what I'm going to be showing you today um, because if you have one of these Lima um, HSTs they are still really really good I think um, so if you can't for example go or can't really afford to have an expensive uh, buy an expensive Hornby HST um, you, can, you can make one of these up on the cheap yourself um, my currently my, my two car HST that I bought um, into city livery cost me £28 for the two. Um, this has cost me a further £14, sorry £15. Um, and what I'm going to try and do is have two power cars so I can use the power and the pickups off of this one to power the other TTS chip when I get it. But in the meantime, because I'm not sure if it's going to work totally, um, I'm just going to hardwire it up anyway. And I know it will work in DCC anyway, so it's, that's not going to be a problem. So that's going to be the focus of the video. Now, people have been asking me about um, Alan and his buildings and what I'm going to be doing with them. And some of you may have noticed that in that corner there, I've actually extended his buildings and, and actually created that um, and done some work on those already. So, and I've also extended the platform as you can probably see just over there. Um, I've also elongated that as well and kind of mishmashed that but that will be on another video so I've already made a start on the platform but not to worry you haven't missed it or anything like that today's video is mainly going to be on the HST um, in saying that um, I'd like to quickly um, mention um, a few people um, Alan being one of them Graham over at Lakeside is another person who's there's been a bit of a debate going on about the sound and what to do about sound and whether to fit iPhones and iPhone speakers and mega bass speakers and all that kind of stuff. And for those of you who don't know, and this could be a handy thing to try before you put a speaker in, and what I would recommend is, just me personally, you don't have to follow my advice as per usual, you just take it for what it is. Um, I've, been a couple, I've spoken to Kevin over at Coastal DCC. Now, his sound chip is on my 66 at the moment. 
and I actually spoke to him about actually improving the volume on that decoder. Now the decoder on that is an ESU decoder and he tells me, um, and I've also got a couple of 50s with his ESU decoders, and he's telling me that if you have an ESU decoder, that the CV setting that you need to adjust the overall volume is number 63. And so if you have a locomotive with an ESU decoder in it, sound decoder in it, and you'd like to adjust the volume, either increase it or decrease it, um, it is CV63. However, that being said, um, it would be advisable to read it first, um, just to check where the base is for, the, for that 63 setting. So for example, if you read it and it says 50 um, first, then you kind of know that if you need to come back to it and readjust it back to the way it was, you know that it'll be back to normal, if you see what I mean. So once you adjust it, like say to 63 or 65 or whatever to make it louder, if you don't like it, you can put it back down to 50 and you know that that's going to be where it was, so you've got a point of reference. So that's the only thing that I would suggest, is that you do read the CD first um, before you go, to, before you start altering it, which is what I do normally anyway. Um, also, um, if you have a Zimo uh, decoder in your locomotive, sound um, locomotive Zimo, there is also a CV for that as well, uh, for the sound, but I need to double check that, so stay with me. Okay, right, so I've quickly checked, and uh, double checked it, I should say, and if you have a Zimo decoder, and you'd like to adjust the overall volume of it, that is CV266, um, apparently. Um, I don't actually have, um, I don't actually have any low post with similar decoders, all mine are ESU decoders um, or TTS. Those are the two the options that I have. Um, and one with self assistance, which I also think is a um, ESU as well. But like I said, before you start messing around, obviously with it, um, it is advisable to um, actually just read the CV first so you have a point of reference before you alter it in case it has any unexpected consequences. So onwards and upwards with our video, um, because we've already been doing it for a little while. So speak to you shortly. So before I start, one of the things I always like to do is um, whenever I get a new locomotive or do any modifications to any locomotive, is I like to get a base to start from because then if there's any issues further down the line, then I can try and work my way back in terms of trying to work out what's gone wrong. Um, this in its current form is a standard Lima um, HST. It's had nothing done to it, it's just a DC Lima HST. So the thing to do is um, basically check that it works first and foremost. And as you can see, It's running well on my test track. It's not a very long test track, but as you can see, it does work. It's a bit on the wobbly side, which is something I'll have to investigate, um, but it is working. Um, albeit, with it being an old Ringfield motor, it's a bit jerky, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to get another power car um, to try and see if I can improve the performance overall of the HST at lower speeds. So, um, and I think it probably needs cleaning and maintenance, but that's something that I can always do afterwards. But yeah, like I said, it does run. It's just a bit on the wobbly side. So now we've ascertained that, we can now move to the bench. So here we are back at the workbench. We've now tested it on analog, and it's now time to open her up. Now, there are two screws on the bottom, one there, one there, you undo those, and the body should just slide off like that. And then that exposes the insides of the um, HSD. And as you can see, there's a weight, and then there's the old ring field motor there, and there's a TV suppressor. Now we're gonna get rid of that, and that's the first thing we're gonna be doing. But first of all, 
uh, let me just explain to you what we have here. Um, we have our soldering iron. Um, we also have some solder, obviously, and some flux. We also have, um, this is just to clean the tip of the soldering iron. Um, and I also have, um, what else did I have? Oh yeah, a bit of heat shrink. And we also have a decoder harness, um, which is actually just a socket, no decoder. Um, I've got a decoder over there, an old Hornby TTS, which played up and the sound packed up on it, but the decoder actually was still working, so I just use it as a standard decoder. Um, so that's gonna be going into there just for testing purposes. Now we've got all these wires running out of it, but the wires that we're really interested in, um, as you can see the socket there, is we're interested in the black and gray and the red and orange. And those are the ones that we are interested in today. Now, one of the things to bear in mind when doing a Lima HST um, conversion is you just need to bear in mind as in what you want to do with it. And what I mean is, um, as you saw in the introduction, my HST was running pretty well with just one power car. So if you're running it with just one power car, it doesn't really matter which way round you wire it. However, in my case, I'm gonna be adding two power cars, which means um, that I have to be more careful about how I wire this up. Um, because if you wire them up both the same way, what will happen is that when you go forward, both trains will go that way. And you need one to go to be facing that way to go that way. So you have to wire them up slightly differently. Um, because otherwise, if you wire them, like I said, both the, the same way, then they'll both tend to go the same way. So what will happen is you'll have this train from the Lareka coaches, but this power car on the other end, which should be facing this way, will be facing that way because of the way it's wired up. So that's why you have to be a bit careful if you're gonna wire up two power cars. If you're wiring up one, like I was having before, it's not really an issue if you get it wrong. Uh, but it is a bit more tricky if you're doing two power cars, which is what I'm doing. Um, I'm doing it more because of the reliability and also trying to get um, see if I can get the TTS chip to work on it. If it doesn't, I've still got my other two Hornby um, for Class 43 HSTs that I've just put it in today and leave the, leave the Lima one um, without sound. So it's not really too much of an issue. So we're gonna, I must confess, I haven't actually done this before in terms of trying to um, add two power cars to the, to, and doing the wiring the other way around, but I think that's the theory and I think that's how it's gonna work. So we'll see how this goes. So the first thing to do is to take off the um, TV suppressor, which is what I'm gonna be doing now. So as you can see, I've just removed the little TV suppressor, got rid of that. And the next thing I need to do is um, to start wiring this up, basically. And um, so what I'll do is I'll, what I did before, I, this one was the main black one. Um, I wired this to the black the last time, but this time I'm gonna wire it to the red. And um, because if I wire it to the, to, the, to the black again, then obviously then it'd be wired the same way as the other one. So we have to do it the opposite. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna take off this clip. Now with that, just pulling off the clip just releases the bogey. And then that releases that as well. And it makes it easier to work on. So I'm just gonna desolder this. So that's that one. And as you can see, it, it's just completely soldered now. Now, the thing with this is that the red and the black are the main power ones and the orange and the gray are for the motor. So what I'm gonna do is cut a bit of piece of heat shrink off.
and I'm also going to just get take a bit more off of this. I was going to use the wire cutters, but the thing is, the wire cutters don't because this is such fine wire doesn't actually um, it doesn't actually um, cut that finer wire. So I have to use um, the scissors to actually get, make the cut. Now, I did have some help in hand somewhere, but I can't find it, so I'm gonna to have to kind of improvise. And um, so I've used the soldering tab just to hold the wire. And um, let me just make sure that's done. All right, so that's okay. And clean that tip. Just put a bit of solder on it. Now, Please don't shoot me down in flames for the way I sold it because I'm not an expert on it, but I am getting better. Alright, so that is now done. So you can now see that that's done. that's just done and now I'll just put the heat shrink over it and I'm just gently rubbing it that should seal it so that's that one done Now what we need to do is do the same to this one. So we're gonna desolder. So what I'm gonna do on this one, I'm just gonna desolder that wire. I'm gonna attach the black one to that. So that's the next thing to do. And in fact, what I'm going to do first, you can see my brain ticking along. Um, I'm going to actually solder that one first, just so I know, because I'm one of these people that I think I'm going to remember and then I don't and then I forget. So I'm just going to attach the orange to that. Dip there and roll. Right. See, another thing I do sometimes is I um, I take photographs because I know I have a habit of thinking that I'm going to remember and then I do it and then I forget where everything goes. So this is one of the reasons why I'm just doing that. So I now know that basically the red is now connected to that and the orange is connected to that, to that side of the motor where this original pickup came from. And now we're gonna do the same now because now I know that, that the um, gray one will go there and the black one will go to here. So now what I need to do is just desolder this one. So that's that. And now we have, if I can see it, more heat shrink. And 
and then the black one which is this one will go to here so we're now going to just have a little dip there Alrighty, now uh, like I said, I did have some helping hands, I have no idea where they went to, but in the meantime, that is not going anywhere. Get a little tug. Now do the heat shrink. So that's now sorted. just left with the um, the grey. I'm not really paying too much attention so I hope this has come out alright. So I'm just going to snip a bit more off the um, of the sheath as they say, you know, the, the cover. So we can then expose that a bit more. Have another little dip. And let's see where we go from there. So where's that great white gone? There it is. And that needs to just be make sure these other wires are out of the way. There we have it, all right, that's all done. All right, so that's that. So, as you can see, that the, that the gray and the orange have gone to the motor, the black it goes to the pickup, and the red goes to the other pickup. And um, hopefully, um, this should all work. So we'll have to test it in a moment. So what I'm just doing now is um, I'm just cleaning the pickup basically. And I'm just cleaning the clip. I mean you don't have to do this but since I'm here it's just a matter of just cleaning that. Hopefully it'll just make good contact. And um, yeah, that I'll do the same with with the bogey pickup. So I'll just pop the bogey back. It should make sure goes. The right way round, which I've noticed, which is like this little little lugs, they go to the to the front. Otherwise, it'll be facing the wrong way round. And then you just slide that in, and that should be job done, as they say. So just give this a good old clean with the old.
right, so I guess now is the moment of truth really in terms of testing it. So I'm just gonna kind of, that's the thing, there's a lot of wires here. I didn't really wanna cut them all off in case I need them again. So where's that, what I did last time is I just put the weight in. And just shove it all in there for now. All I wanna do is just test that the, that the decoder works. That's all I'm interested in right now. I can always tidy this up. Um, afterwards, once this is all done. One of the other things I like to do, which is what I'm gonna do now, is to avoid any problems short circuiting, is on all these wires, there's a little bare metal, uh, bare wire exposed. And I just cut, it, just trim the ends off to make sure that there isn't gonna be any issues with short circuits by one of these um, other cables inadvertently. Um, touching things that they shouldn't be touching. So that's that one, that one, that one, and I think I need the white as well. So, so that does that. Right, so all of those ones that were exposed are now just um, not. <laughs> so hopefully, um, Like I said, I just need to just try and just check it. I'm not really interested in having it that tidy at the moment. I just want to know that it runs. Right, so next thing to do is to insert the decoder, which I'll get. And the decoder I'm using is an old Hornby TTS chip, like I said earlier. It packed up, the sound packed up, I don't know why. And I can never get it to work. But because I'd really modified it, I couldn't take it back. But because the chip was still working, I just used that as a regular chip. So now it's a matter of making sure that the um, that they go in the right way round, which I think is that way round. Right, so that's in. So that's plugged in. So in theory. Um, this should all work, so join me on the test track. So hello and um, welcome to the test track once again. Now what I've done is I've now hooked up the Hornby Elite, uh, which permanently lives here, and this is the, the um, controller of choice when I do my programming. I actually find the um, Hornby Elite to be really useful. Um, another gift, generous gift from Alan. Um, so it still has its uses. So I tend to use it for programming because I find it really easy to use for programming and adjusting the CVs more than I do the Gauge Master. And also because it's permanently hooked up, I don't have to keep chopping and changing everything all the time. So I like the idea that this is just permanently set up here, direct connected directly to the test track. And like I said, I do use these um, the connectors which you can just splice and split open quite easily. Now what I've done is, um, I've put it on the test track, the HST chassis. Um, it's got the decoder and the address from the um, from the 33 that I took it out of. So it should be the same address. So I'm just gonna test it. And um, as you can see, it works. So, It's a bit on the old jerky side, but again, it is a Link a Lima hate Ringfield motor. However, that being said, um, it works. And also, the thing being is, once it's had to run around the layout, and it's been, I haven't oiled it or anything, which is something I'm going to be doing next. Hopefully, it will just smoothen out and give it some run time. And eventually, the um, performance hopefully will improve. So the next thing to do will be to then um, basically tidy up the chassis in terms of um, just basically putting it back together, tidying up the wiring, and because we know it, now we know it works, 
hopefully, the only thing I haven't done is I haven't te um, tested it in terms of whether it runs in the same direction as the other one, which we, I will show you shortly once I put it all back together. So here we have my dummy car, um, but I'm going to use this body and put it on the chassis of the other one, of the power car, and in the same way, um, it just pops out. Um, quite e well, I say quite easily, but some of them have removed that. There you go. And there you go. And actually, it's in much nicer condition, better condition than the other one. However, um, there are no actual pickups or anything on this thing, so you can't get any sound out of it, which is one of the reasons why I wanted another power car. Because um, you could probably buy pickups, but they might end up being more expensive than what I actually paid. I mean, I paid £15 for this, for the chassis. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop um, this chassis, which doesn't have... I've just noticed that this one doesn't have a... Um, This one doesn't have an interior, the one that I bought. So I'm going to swap the interior over, which is a bit, which is a, which is a clip on. So we'll do that. I didn't realise that. Um, so that should just, I think that's on just like that actually. Yeah, oh, that's it. That seems to have clipped in there. So yeah, so that's that one. So basically now we've just got a rolling chassis here, which is fine. But I can still use this if I just fancy a change, so it's not really a problem. And then just pop the screws back on. But like I said, the body is in overall better condition of my Intercity, which is what I wanted anyway. That's one in, and then there's another screw in the back here. I quite like the fact that there's just really quite easy to take these bodies off. I think Link would have actually got a good system, or well, did have a good system, because it was easy to pop off with the clips, but you've got that added security of just a couple of screws that are nice and easy to get to. Um, the Hornby stuff tends to have just the clips, which it's great, but sometimes the body can just literally just pop off just like that. So you've got to be careful when lifting them. And Batman sometimes have got like four clips all, all tucked away and you've got to try and get to it and it all becomes a bit fiddly. So this is just like a really nice way of getting the body off. So I've now got a rolling um, dummy car with um, that body on it, so I can still use that. And now, We have, um, now the other thing to bear in mind also with this is to make sure that the holes ain't blocked so when you screw the body back on, you're not gonna inadvertently damage the wiring. So um, that's something else to bear in mind. She says. Right, so that one's in. Um, my apologies, it is quite a lengthy video today. But I'm just doing this all in real time, so if any of you want to follow it and do the same, um, I can actually see put that wires in the way. I can just see it. So I'm gonna have to remove the body. Something because you don't want to pierce the wiring and damage the wiring and then it don't work. 
I just noticed it. So let's just pull that out again. The other side was fine, it was it was just this side. I think what I'm gonna do with this. Make sure that that's just well out of the way. And what I'll do is I'll just put a little bit just to hold it in place. I don't know if it will work, but it's just just enough just to stop it from moving around. That should be okay now. I just peeped through the hole and I noticed that there was a wire going across the hole, which would have, could have meant that I could have pierced the wire in and then split it and then it wouldn't work. So it's just as well I checked it. Do, 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 do. My apologies if this is a bit on the boring side. Right, so we're all together. So my new, um, it's my new power car, DCC, to go with my other one. So let's put it back on a test track and make sure it still works. So hello everyone and um, welcome back. Um, since my last clip it's been a troublesome couple of days um, with the um, Lima HST. Um, I've had all sorts of issues with it. Um, she is running, the second one I should say, um, but it's had so many issues it's unreal. Um, but we've come good in the end by the looks of things. Um, basically, let me just show you. Um, this was the original TTS decoder that I had um, that I was testing it with and this decoder in, in the end gave up the ghost and um, it just ended up going in one direction and not in reverse it only going forward but not in reverse so I had to go to my local model shop to go and get myself a new decoder which I did um, I was recommended to get one of these, um, a Gauge Master um, DCC26 small, um, which would work well because uh, apparently the Hornby issues give out some sort of issues and all the rest of it. Personally, I haven't had any issues with Hornby chips except with um, the TTS early ones. Um, but nonetheless, I bought this one and the HST absolutely hated it absolutely hated it. Um, it just juddered completely and just stop, start, stop, start. It literally just, it's almost like you'd have to push it around the layout. I mean, it was almost that bad, you know, just kick in, go off after a few seconds. So that didn't seem to work. Um, I swapped it out with another decoder and I actually also got my meter out to make sure that there was nothing wrong with my wiring and it wasn't. Um, it just it just didn't like the decoders that I was putting into it. Um, but the other one, um, which is actually sitting down there, um, this one, which is 43072, um, that one's actually working perfectly fine with the decoder in it with no hassle at all. The one that's running at the moment, um, 43178, that's been the one that's had that I've had the most grief over. Now, as you can see, she's actually running pretty sweet now. Um, but we'll get into how I done that. So yeah, so it didn't like the decoders that I was putting into it. I couldn't work it out why, and I just swapped the decoder out of another decoder. 
Again, it got slightly better, but it was still juddering like anything. Um, you couldn't really use it. Um, so, it just hesitated everywhere. Um, so, what did I do next? So I stripped out the motor and cleaned that up. Um, and that improved it. Um, it was still puffing and panting and puffing and panting and it wasn't really, it was, it was getting there but it wasn't still quite right and I then took the front apart and gave that a clean and now we seem to be at a point where um, it's actually running all right. Um, it's still hesitating too much for my liking, there's still a little bit, there's a couple of points where it seems to sort of almost die on you. Um, but at least it is running and it's running pretty well and actually if you can see it's actually running at 30 at the moment um, whereas before you couldn't even get it under 50 um, because if you got it under 50 it would just die um, so, so it just goes to show you just cleaning up the whole thing um, how much of a difference it has improved it and it's pretty reliable to be honest um, like I said, they were both then put on, both 43178 and 072, put onto my rolling road. And, I, and they were working perfectly fine under the DC conditions. But obviously it's an old Ringfield motor and obviously converting it to DCC is a bit more, they don't seem to like it so much. Um, but, like I said, we've got it to a point where they're both running really, really reliably. Um, like I said, 178 still hesitates from time to time. but. As you can see, I can leave it unattended and it's, and it's running well enough. So, um, and I'm actually still using the trailer car at the moment because I can't actually run it with the other power car um, because whilst that one's still hesitating, there's still kind of like this sort of um, tug of war between the two power cars where one's pushing, one's pulling and, and it's just... So until I've ironed it out, um, then I can't really run them both together at the moment. But it's not the end of the world because I knew that either way it was going to work. Now the one thing I should say um, is I did say about my wiring and my theory on it and whether it would work or not. So let me just give you the result of that. And uh, Basically no. <laughs> um, I wired it opposite and when I put them, tried to put them both together they were both running in the same direction. So what I did is I went on to um, the programming track and dialed in CV29 and read the CV29 and it came up with a number and I plus one and when I plus one it changed the direction of the locomotive so now that's how I've managed to get them to both now work as I want them. Um, I wasn't quite sure, I thought that maybe if you wired them oppositely it would work but it obviously didn't. Um, so that's kind of like a lesson to learn. But, like I said, all things failing, you know, just reverse the polarity via CV29, which is what I ended up doing. And like I said, it's now, they're both now running pretty reliably. Um, what I don't understand still is that 43178 will go over points with no problem for a good few rounders, and then it'll, after, after a short period, it'll come to the same point, and it will just sort of stutter or or slow down and I'm just not quite sure why. Um, I don't seem to have this problem with 072. That just seems to run round and round and round and doesn't seem to hesitate at all. Um, but this one that's running at the moment, 178, um, is still hesitating from time to time. So all in all, um, it's a worthwhile experiment and I'm happy with the results. I mean, I haven't quite got there yet. Um, but it's we're near enough there. They're both running really, really sweet. Like I said, one seven eight just has to take from time to time a little bit over the points. Um, but it could be a, it could be that I could end up putting TTS to both of them. I don't know whether I'll be able to run them both together because, like I said, there is that kind of issue of tug and more at the moment. But I need to get one seven eight rely um, running more and more reliably to be able to run them both together. So once it stops hesitating, 072 doesn't hesitate, they should be able to run together and then I can adjust the CVs accordingly to make sure they sort of more or less run together. Um, 
in the meantime, um, the 66 is running around with the um, portable coaches that um, Alan kindly donated to me. And the next video you'll see uh, will be a layout update because there is quite a lot that I have done. Um, it might not look it, but there are some changes and some things that I've altered, um, buildings that I've worked upon and stuff like that. So that will be on the next update. As far as the Lima HST um, project's concerned, that's near enough done and it, like I said, they're both running really, really well. So, well enough that I can just sort of leave them unattended. So I'm happy enough and hopefully, um, like I said, I can either put the intercity body back onto the dummy car like it was before to run it as just one power car like I did before, or I can have it as two separate. So, we'll see. I mean, there are options there. That body is not in bad nick, um, but I do prefer the intercity livery body. So just before we go, it's a goodbye from me, from Mildenhall, and until the next time, like I said, it will be a layout update, and I'll leave you with a few running shots um, of this HST running around, and um, like I said, until the next time, it's goodbye from me, and please feel free to comment and subscribe, and if you want to ask any questions, please feel free to do so, and I will try and help you as best I can. So bye for now. Bye-bye.